Tate Chronicles now transmitting. Welcome to the Tate Chronicles on Healthcare Now Radio. And now, here's your host, Jim Tate. Good day, citizens of the free world from border to border, coast to coast, and to all the ships at sea. I bring you a warm welcome. This is your correspondent, Jim Tate, and thank you for tuning in to the Tate Chronicles. Join me as we cut through the fog that exists at the leading edge of healthcare technology. My guest today is Megan Gaffney, who is the co-founder and CEO of VEDA. VEDA is building really a bridge from AI as an idea to real-world use cases for healthcare plans and providers. Their goal is to empower the ability of healthcare employees uh, to be able to, to focus on the member and patient experience instead of basic manual processes. Megan, thanks for joining me on this episode of the Take Chronicles. Thanks so much for having me, Jim. Um, I, it's really timely to, to have you uh, here today, Megan. Uh, we've heard so much, certainly in the last, I'd say, year and a half or two years about AI uh, and its uh, involvement in, in healthcare. Um, and d- just from my view of it, Megan, it's it seems like the work that you're doing at VEDA, where you're working on a lot of the uh, uh, bringing AI to solve a lot of the AI, really using AI to deal with some of the challenges kind of on the back office or administrative side of things. So first, let, let me ask that. is uh, This seems to be the focus of VEDA, right? You provide solutions to payers, not providers. Is that correct? Well, we're starting with payers, Jim, Uh that's right. Um, And we really think AI has the potential to help automate lots of processes across the back office of healthcare, starting with the payers, but moving into provider organizations as well. And it's really a good place for folks to get to understand and build trust with some of these new technologies before they take the leap into things like leveraging AI for patient care. Exactly. Uh, So really, it's the sandbox or or proving ground where the risk is certainly lower uh, until everybody kind of gets comfortable with with AI. Now, Tell me a little bit about uh, VEDA, first of all. When was it founded? Uh, how long has this been going on? And maybe what are some of your recent partnerships? Yeah. Um, VEDA was founded in 2015, and we mm. spent mm-hmm. our first few years um, really experimenting with this new technology and how it could help drive more resources financially to patient experience and and care for health plans members. And that was really our initial focus. My co-founder is an astrophysicist Mm. and he was using AI and machine learning in radio astronomy. And I had a background in public policy. And we had this crazy idea that you could use some of the new technology that was being built in academic research centers and leverage it to make healthcare more financially efficient. You know, pretty soon we're going to have 400 million Americans that need really high quality care. And there isn't enough money in the system to do that when you're spending millions of dollars transferring things like provider rosters from one Mm. organization to the next. And so that was really our goal. Uh, In 2020, we released our first SaaS software platform that automated uh, the exchange of provider data from the provider organization to the payer, and then automatically cleanse that information so that when health plan members were accessing a directory, they'd have great quality data. Um, we've grown over those years, and now we just recently announced a really exciting partnership uh, with Humana to provide data quality services in an automated way to their Medicare Advantage members across the country. And so we're really excited to see this idea that's less than 10 years old really grow up and Mm. become an important part of the data infrastructure of our healthcare system. Would you, uh, an example of Humana and their Medicare Advantage program. So uh, does this have to do with keeping an accurate record of which providers are in network, which is constantly changing or out of network? Yeah. It, that, what yeah. providers are in network, what kind of conditions they treat, and if they're accepting new patients now. And those are the really the things that their members need. I mean, my parents are actually Humana 
Medicare Advantage members in Ohio. And I'll tell you, you know, my dad recently had to go get an appointment with a cardiologist. And knowing that you can trust the information when your primary care doctor says, hey, you know, time to go uh, upgrade your care here. You're getting to the age where you need to see a cardiologist regularly. And knowing that they can go and make that appointment quickly and efficiently um, and not have to spend hours trying to find the right in-network doctor, it's a real relief for those members. And so um, companies like Humana are making these investments in data quality because it matters a lot um, to their members and they want to keep driving that business back year over year. Megan, I know at, at Veda you have um, uh, you identified some real uh, opportunities and, and uh, to address some of the challenges. And um, in this type of, uh, I guess, uh, concise way to have accurate data uh, in ways we've been talking about. And so as you've addre addressed those with different applications. So I'm aware of some of those applications. Uh, let me bring up specifically those different applications and maybe you can explain what challenge uh, uh, have been addressed by those applications. Sure. I, I know you've got something called Vector. Well, yeah. I, I kind of like the way it's spelled V E C T Y R. So, what's a, what does Vector do? What's what's the challenge that it was created to address? Yeah. So, in order to cleanse provider directories and claims data systems, we needed to have the right answer about every provider and practice group in the country. What doctors were seeing new patients at which location to treat what condition? And so we had to build our own national directory of providers, facilities, and practice groups in every specialty. So from behavioral analysts all the way through uh, mm. neurosurgeons. Mm -hmm. And we make that data available in real time. It means that we are gathering information from state licensing boards and federal agencies, but also from individual marketing websites and Google places. We're pulling in hundreds of thousands of data sources together, and then we train a machine to pick the right answer for every provider every day. And we make that available to our customers to help them build really efficient health plan networks to fill gaps that they might have to decide uh, what information is correct. And they can also f use it to fuel things like referral and care management systems. Well, um, and so uh, you, you're pulling information in from these different uh, databases, I guess, out there you mentioned, like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, directories or state license boards or I'm not even sure uh, what else. But, and so you are as accurate as they are. Um, uh, and as up to date as they are. And so do you set up like a API with them? How do you actually get that data? Oh um, man, we get it yeah. any way we can. Um, yeah. I won't call out the state, but one of the state nursing boards still mails a CD-ROM every month. Wow. So we really have to be creative to be able to pull the data in, in whatever level of quality and frequency it's available. And then the magic is that the AI system can pick which information is accurate and correct and leave the rest behind. And so we've built a really rigorous system of testing to be sure that our data is highly accurate. And we do that um, through secret shopper audits that are very similar to the way that the agencies mm -hmm. uh, test the data accuracy. So we have a team um, that's led by our data scientist, Rishi Patel in New York City. Um, and he's working with scientists all across the country on a regular basis, testing this information, making sure that it's accurate so that we can guarantee for our customers the accuracy of the data that we're providing to them. And, and so, you're, again, your customers may be Humana, Humana or some other large payer, but um, uh, eventually, I guess they have some type of dashboard or portal where individuals, patients can log in and access this data. Is that, right. is that the end point of it? Yeah, that's exactly okay. right. Okay. Um, I know you've got uh, an application called Quantum. What is Quantum all about? Yeah, so Quantum is our um, data monitoring system. So if you think about inside uh, a giant claim system inside a health plan or a really small um, referral management system inside mm -hmm. a, a local Medicaid plan, there are lots of opportunities for humans to go in and enter information incorrectly. And that might make claims not pay properly or on time. 
There are opportunities for duplicates to cre get created in those systems or data to age and nobody checks it. What Quantum does is it monitors that information and alerts the health plan when something has gone stale or is incorrect and instructs them how to fix it. And in some ways, you know, those fixes can be made automatically. And so it's really an investment in ongoing data quality and it supercharges the teams internally that have been doing that work. In the past, it's taken hundreds of people looking up information and spot checking it every single day. And it's not a very efficient process and it didn't lead to high quality information. And so Quantum automates those processes and increases the quality of data um, on an ongoing basis for the health plan. Well, uh, and, and so let me give you a couple of scenarios and you're telling, let me know if it's relevant. So uh, somebody gets uh, married and changes their last name. All the time. <laughs> How would that get picked up? Yeah, so we see yeah. that we see that all of the time, especially mm -hmm. if you have young providers, you know, when they initially register, they get a state license, they get an MPI one number, and over time their name might change. And in a lot of these systems, claim systems, for example, you might have two records, one with the old last name and mm -hmm. one with the new mm -hmm. last name. And so depending on which record uh, gets pulled when they try to process a claim, if it's the old last name and it doesn't match, even though the MPI one number is the same, that provider isn't paid on time. It falls out and it goes to a manual queue that gets worked while a human being tries to figure out what's wrong. It's not a great experience uh, for that doctor, right? They are frustrated with the payer and the payer has a lot of costs because now they're paying somebody to manually look at that information. We can pick up that change in an automated way and fix it inside the claim system so that there's not a duplicate record, the name gets updated, and then that doctor's paid correctly and on time. So it really makes the whole system work better, both for the payer and the provider. I, I know in a lot of cases out there, um, uh, it may not happen. Um, it certainly happens with, with patients. I'm not sure about with providers. Uh, again, uh, somebody's last name, they may have a hyphenated last name. Uh, some places, uh, the first name uh, uh, in, in the last name is, uh, you know, is in an alphabetical order. Sometimes the alphabetical order is based on the second part of the hyphen name. Is it, you know, a thousand different little details like that that can mess up records that need to be checked? That's right. And it, what it does for the member of the health plan at the end of the day mm -hmm. is it creates a couple downstream problems. The first is sometimes they can't find providers that are actually accepting patients that could see them quickly because the data is not pulling correctly in the system. And so, you know, when you think about things like behavioral health care, if somebody is waiting six months on a waiting list to see a provider, mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. single appointment that's available matters. And so we want to make sure every provider that has availability to see patients shows up in those portals, right? And then the second thing is they sometimes get surprise bills because a name is incorrect or a license number or a tax ID that they're billing under. If that's incorrect, sometimes the, the member of the health plan, the patient at the end of the day gets a bill that they don't expect um, because it's saying, hey, this provider doesn't look like they're in our network. When they actually are, if the data was correct, they wouldn't get that surprise bill. And so that's where you see some of this legislation that's starting to happen um, around the No Surprises Act mm -hmm. uh, to try to prevent those data errors causing surprise bills. And, and we're going to dig into that in a little more detail in just a few minutes. Yep. But uh, just the situation uh, that you were uh, describing, Megan, where uh, uh, the uh, ability for a, a patient to, to look it up you know, their uh, third party insurance companies, uh, in network providers, and see which ones are accepting new patients. Uh, uh, how it, that's got to be pretty hard to keep updated because if the providers are not keeping it updated, you know, who, who knows? I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, there's probably some areas that there's only so much you can do in terms of providing reliable information. That's right. I mean, providers giving that information mm -hmm. or testing to it 
is part of the answer. Um, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of patterns that we can pick up in things like claims data that indicate, hey, this provider looks like they're accepting new patients. Oh, wow. So when we start to leverage yeah. all of those data points, we get mm. the best answer possible for um, for the insurance plan and then you know downstream for patients that are trying to make appointments and get into care quickly. Um, the yeah. other thing that we can yeah. see that helps with that, Jim, is new providers getting added mm -hmm. uh, and getting them onboarded very quickly, right? So that new residents, when they're coming online uh, at the beginning of residency, they're able to get in and actually take patients quickly, right? They show up on the insurance plan's website fast. And so those gaps getting filled um, really help people be able to make appointments as quickly as they can. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I see kind of monitoring if there are billing codes coming across that are obviously new patient billing codes, initial consult, things like that. You know, they're seeing new patients. That's right. Uh, 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 let me say to the audience, if you're just joining us, I'm Jim Tate. And on this episode of the Tate Chronicles, I'm speaking with Megan Gaffney, the co-founder and CEO of VEDA. Um, uh, You've got an application called Velocity. What's Velocity? What challenge does that address with AI? Yeah, just like it sounds, uh, it is the it increases the speed of getting yeah. data from the provider to the payer, and at the end of the day, then to the member of the health plan or the patient. So right now, the status quo when a big hospital system. Um, is communicating with the payer to tell them, hey, we just got a crop of new residents, add mm -hmm. them to your directory, is an email with an attached spreadsheet gets sent from the provider mm -hmm. to the payer, and then the payer pays somebody to hand key that data in to their downstream systems. We've seen those spreadsheets take as long as two months to get fully sure. entered into downstream systems. Sure. Big health systems, they may have 50,000 rows of data that needs to be entered. And you can imagine how accurate that is when it's done by hand. Exactly. Yeah. We fully automated that uh, ingestion into the downstream payer systems um, with a tool that looks pretty much like Dropbox. You take mm. a file that comes in from the payer or, or the provider organization in any format. We don't have to have seen it before. You drag it into the portal and you tell it to get started. And what Velocity does is it understands, it can read the file, understands the concepts within it, and then it can compare it to the claims and provider data management systems of the payer to say what's new that needs to be added, what needs to be updated, um, and what should be removed. And it can process that same file that could take eight weeks to do by hand um, and do it in about, you know, anywhere from five to 25 minutes. We guarantee 24 hour ingestion of files of any size. And what that allows is the communication between the provider and the payer to happen without them having to agree on uh, data structure or mm -hmm. terminology. Mm -hmm. So it makes interoperability really possible without them having to agree on the rules of the road. I know we've talked about some applications you have running in the real world right now and the challenges they're addressing. Uh, are you willing to uh, tip your hand and tell me what type of AI applications you're thinking about moving into? Yeah, I mean, I think from our roadmap perspective, we're going to continue to leverage every type of technology we can to automate these data processes. So today mm -hmm. we use things like natural language processing, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, whatever tool is right for the problem. Um, what we want to expand into and to continue to look at is how do we help health plans not only clean up the data they have today, but build really high quality networks in the future. Mm -hmm. And so how can we leverage all of our products and all of the data that Beta has access to? to be able to help them construct networks from scratch that are more competitive, more effective for members in the market and more cost efficient. And so what you're gonna see coming out from us um, throughout this year and into next year are online platform tools 
that allow health plans and provider organizations to access all of our data to help build out those really efficient networks. And we're going to keep adding data fields that are relevant, things like cultural competency, language information, mm -hmm. advanced training that providers are mm -hmm. engaged in, because it really matters right now um, in constructing networks that are meeting the needs of their unique communities. Megan, we only have about five or six more minutes to talk, but one thing um, I really wanted uh, to, to hear from you about uh, that I'm very interested in, I don't know enough about it, and that's some of the recent regulations and legislation about uh, surprise medical bills. Mm -hmm. uh, what are those acts called and what do they really do for people? Yeah, so uh, this is really my background, Jim. So I started mm -hmm. my first um, decade working in the policy space. And so legislators have been listening to their constituents and patients have been saying two things loud and clear. One is that they can't find the information on in-network doctors easily enough and it's getting in the way of them accessing care. And the second thing they're saying is it's costing me a lot of money. And so regulators are leveraging that feedback and they've passed one piece of legislation and there's another that's coming up. So the one that passed is the No Surprises Act. And that basically tells health plans, hey, if you have information on your website that says a provider's in network, even if they're not, that's your mistake. You can't charge your patients, you can't mm. charge your members mm -hmm. for those extra bills. You have to eat that cost. And so that's incentivizing health plans to invest in technology like Veda to ensure sure. that the information they're putting out is accurate. Sure. But members are still having trouble finding appointments. Even if they know they're not going to end up with the bill, they still can't access care if the information's not correct. And so Senator Ron Wyden and Senator Mike Crapo, a Democrat and a Republican working in a bipartisan way, this year introduced legislation called the Real Provider Act. And so the Real Act um, goes beyond no surprises in that it says the information that you have on your website needs to be accurate. And we're going to publish the accuracy of that information so that Medicare Advantage patients can make a decision, just like they use STARS to help make their buying decisions. They're now going to have information about your accuracy. We're going to hold you financially accountable, and we're going to publish your accuracy results. And so that's just one more step mm -hmm. in this direction of giving patients the information they need to make good choices about their health plan. So we're excited about it. We think it incentivizes plans to do the right thing. And partners that we have in the market, like those at Humana, really also want to give their members the best experience. And so the investment really aligns with the legislation. You know, th that is a giant step in the right direction because anybody who's ever gotten a bill from a hospital, th their surprise is there. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to describe a scenario, Megan. I, I don't know if we're going to need another act to deal with it or not. But uh, I've talked to quite a few folks who's maybe a Medicare Advantage plan or, or whatever plan they're on, their, their hospital and hospital uh, providers um, are in network. They go in and have surgery, but the anesthesiologist, a third private party is the anesthesiologist. So they get a separate bill they didn't know that's basically an out of network or kind of almost a private pay situation. Um, are we, uh, that really hadn't been addressed yet, or has it? Well, they're trying to. I mean, I think yeah. the intent of No Surprises was to fix those things, but it's not done yet. And um, I think you're right, Jim, that we will need to see additional legislation as these things go in to effect. There's going to be feedback from the public where they say, hey, you got us like 80 percent of the way there, but I had this surgery and here's what happened to me. And members of Congress are really listening right now. Healthcare is an important issue. Um, it's a presidential year. So, yes. you know, Everybody's out and talking about healthcare and listening to people in their communities. And so I, I do think you'll see more regulation that's patient focused um, coming up in the next 12 to 18 months for sure. And, and um, again, um, the ability to access accurate data and, and complete data is, is paramount here. Uh, before we uh, say goodbye, uh, if folks want to find out more about the products and services at VEDA, where should they go to see what you're doing and get in contact? 
Yeah, Jim, thank you for that. Uh, our website is VEDA, V-E-D-A, data.com. So VEDADATA.com. You can also find us at VEDA Data Solutions on LinkedIn. Um, and just really appreciate you giving us the platform to talk a little bit today. Well, thanks for, you know, uh, for educating me about some of these things. Um, to our audience, thanks for uh, joining me on this episode of the Take Chronicles. I offer a special salute to my guest today, Megan Gaffney, the co-founder and CEO of VEDA. Megan, thanks for coming aboard today. All right. Thank you, Jim. You can find more information on, on this show's program page at healthcarenowradio.com. That's healthcarenowradio.com. Until we meet again, here's wishing you smooth sailing and safe harbors. Tape Chronicles transmission ending now.